drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Let the drummer kick, let the drummer kick die. Today is October 8th, 2014, 3.22 a.m. In 10 hours from now, myself and CrossFit 483 athletes, we will be in the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, Haiti. We thank you for your support during this embarkation. It's kind of surreal waking up here with a fan, a nice clean bed, clean sheets, running hot and cold water, full tank of gas in my car not appreciating much what we have. But I know during this journey, it's not about us, it's about other people. As CrossFitters, this is what we do. We reach out and we help. I wanna thank all of you for your support during this process. I think this experience is gonna be extremely mind-opening. It's gonna serve a better cause, and it's gonna allow us as athletes and as people to appreciate what we have. So thank you for everything, and most importantly, we are doing this to help out the orphans down in Haiti. So, 3.37 a.m. on Monday morning, heading to pick up Nicole Golden in the Pratt Reed's house to embark on this journey. As you can see, green lights, paved roads, gas stations, uh, establishments, businesses. Uh, I, th uh, I could say we're pretty damn spoiled here, and uh, I know it's going to be a complete culture shock and a rude awakening for all of us, but uh, this is an experience that's going to change us for a life. So on the way to Jacksonville Airport, all of us eagerly awaited this trip, unloaded 15 of our army duffel bags that our sponsors, donators, and suppliers gave us for this mission trip. Everybody was eager, everybody was excited, mainly most of us were nervous, didn't know what we were expect on our first trip to Haiti, our first mission trip. Hi, my name is Nicole Golden, and um, I'm looking forward to this Haiti trip. I think we've got a great group of people, which I'm get, I will um, be looking forward to getting to know a little bit better. Expectations for Haiti are um, just coming in contact with a lot of the kids. I know I'll be personally adjusting a lot of them and helping them to feel better, and uh, I'm just looking for a good experience. All right, my name is Pratt Reed. Uh, this is my second trip down to Haiti, so I kind of know what to expect, but I'm really looking forward to uh, getting to know a lot of the uh, members of the group a lot better um, and uh, just sharing a common uh, bond of wanting to serve um, and uh, help others and uh, hopefully we make it back safe. As we loaded our minivan, there was complete and utter chaos. People were hospitable, people were curious, knowing we were down there for a mission. People were interested and intrigued what we had in our bags, but thankfully and luckily, we got into our minivan safely, and we were off, leaving Port-au-Prince Airport to our next village. As we drove and were driving to the town of Ghana Eve, it was turning into dusk, and it was truly apparent that we were in a third world country. No lights, no electricity, barely any food. Good morning. Um, it's hot. It's fucking hot. October 9th, 7.45, 7.50 a.m. Arrived here safely last night, greeted by our staff, our team here in Haiti. So 
plans for today are. We're going to eat breakfast in a half hour. We're going to unpack our bags and head to an orphanage and try to change a life. So um, day one, hot, humid. Standing, sitting here on top of a uh, of our compounds, cinder blocks. Um, yeah, so um, a lot different, but um, this is going to be a, an opportunity that's going to change all of us for the best. So stay tuned. Day one, Haiti. I know we go over and over this without the donators, without the sponsors, without your money. This trip would have never happened. The Neil Sporin, the peanut butter, the food, the gifts, the supplies, the necessities that we take for granted and they do not have, without you, they do not have this. So please know, all of you donators and sponsors, that your efforts have not gone to waste. These Haitians will have these supplies for a longer time than we would. And we cannot thank you enough for giving them this opportunity and us this opportunity to help others. And then we met the kids talking about an awesome experience. All of our time, all of our energy, all of our donators, our supplies, our efforts compacted into this one moment. It was the most memorable experience of my trip. Having young infants and orphans that have never met you in their life come up to you, cling on to you, don't want to let you go, is a pretty touching experience and is one that I'll never forget. Over the course of four days, we primarily worked, helped, and assisted in one orphanage. Our main mission for five of us was to build a chicken coop. Why? Well, the Dominican Republic has the complete monopoly and control over eggs. The majority, if not all, Haitians are malnourished and do not have a sufficient source of protein. So a profound experience that we had the privilege of being in was the second day prior to leaving we went to church. And these Haitians have zero reservations, untamed, confident, trust in the Lord and something bigger than ourselves. It's kind of shitty, um, the circumstances that these Haitians are faced with, the things that we take for granted, obviously, they don't have or they'll never have, but pretty admirable, I guess, how they overcome these circumstances. They, they um, appreciate a lot more than we do. They don't have nearly as much as we do. And not to compare the two, but... Um, they're, they're, they're pretty proud people. It's positive, proud. They pride in what they do, and uh, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah. It kind of sucks that they don't know any better, and they'll really never get out of this life. But um, if we could come and help a couple people and better them, and hopefully give them some sort of brighter future for whatever we could bring here it's a good thing so yeah
This experience would have never been made possible, first and foremost, if Pratt Reed, one of our members, did not get in my ear. So Pratt Reed, thank you for changing my life and opening up my eyes to another world that without you, I probably have never gone to it.